up guys, it's Jay here from TV Time with Jay and I am back once again with another review for you guys and this time I'm here to review A Million Little Things Season 3 Episode 1 Hit and Run. And now as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first and then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory, you have been warned. Okay, so... I reviewed the second season of A Million Little Things on my original channel, Mr. J's Reviews, but unfortunately that channel is gone, so I can't really point you in that direction. But my god, I love this show. It really just is such a well-acted, well-written show. These characters are so fully realized and fleshed out. All their interactions are so meaningful and just... The performances are just so top-notch. It's just mind-blowing how good it is, man. And last season ended on a massive cliffhanger with Eddie, you know, resisting the temptation to fall off the wagon. He went to the bar, but he ended up not drinking. But on his way back home, he ends up getting hit by a truck. And I mean really hit. And that is right where we pick up when the episode starts and things are not looking good for Eddie and I mean not good at all he suffered a lot of internal bleeding and plus the driver like dipped hence the title hit and run and we find out who that driver is at the end of the episode and oh boy is that a twist so later on uh, we find out the full ramifications of this accident and it is pretty fucking massive it seems like uh, for the foreseeable future that Eddie will be paralyzed from the waist down that is kind of mind blowing like a disabled main character that is just holy shit um, and this is speaking as somebody who is physically disabled I mean you know I I didn't get into an accident or anything. I was born with cerebral palsy. And so, you know, I can move and stuff. It's just a lot more difficult. I use crutches and a wheelchair to get around. But, you know, just in general, having a lead character, someone as big as Eddie, being physically disabled, this is, you know, kind of huge. Not only because, you know, it's going to take his story in an interesting direction, but, you know, people like me, people who have these kinds of struggles will actually, you know, have a little bit of representation on TV. Not that, like, I'm out here fishing for representation for more disabled people. Uh, this is organically brought into the story, and I think it's a really interesting way for, you know, Eddie to once again kind of deal with his own demons, you know? And the whole that's the whole thing about this show, right? The biggest theme of this show is, like, the strength of a support system. And to go through this big of a life change, you're going to need as strong of a support system as you can get. And luckily, Eddie does have that with Catherine, with Theo, and of course the rest of their, you know, chosen family, all their friends. And it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. Um, the one complaint I have about this episode is that the Maggie stuff, as much as I love Maggie, as much as I love Allison Miller, uh, all the Maggie stuff kind of felt like it was getting in the way and it was interrupting the parts that I was like... Come on, let me know what's happening with Eddie. I need to know what's happening with Eddie. I don't really, you know, care about Maggie's little, you know, problems with culture shock and, uh, you know, being in England and stuff like that. Let's, let's go back to Eddie, please, please, please. Uh, I, I mean, Maggie, I do care. I like you. But, like, not right now. Not right now. That was kind of my reaction all throughout the episode. And it was just all these sweet moments. And this just proves how good of a character Catherine is. You know, Eddie, he owns up to it. He's like, you know what? Like, Catherine, I'm sorry. You know, I went to that bar to drink. I didn't end up drinking. But if I hadn't have gone there, none of this would have happened. I'm sorry. I messed that up. All I wanted to do was make this day perfect for you. And Catherine, she understands. She, held, she holds his hand. And she asks him, you know, Eddie... Will you finally marry me again? And uh, they do their vow renewal ceremony that was cut short, obviously due to Eddie's accident. And it was, 
Man, it was one of the sweetest moments I've seen in a minute. And let me tell you, like, with the year we've all had, man, we needed some feel-good TV. And that was some feel-good TV. I'm not going to lie. I started uh, sweating from my eyes a little bit. It was uh, pretty great. And then the big twist happened. We discover the identity of the driver who hit Eddie. And it turns out that that guy who drove the truck is none other than the father of Alex. The girl who had a crush on Eddie way back in the day that, you know, drowned because, you know, Eddie was drinking at the time because, you know, this was during his, like, you know, wild teenage period. And a lot of that girl's family blames Eddie for it. Although Eddie doesn't even really remember what happened. And it seems like his sister tried to cover it up. So I think, you know, when he started, you know, digging for answers and looking for, you know, closure last season about that, that triggered some old memories and that, you know, unearthed a lot of anger from the father. And then the father straight up just rammed Eddie with his fucking truck, man. He straight up paralyzed this man. And the scariest part was he was right there watching this wedding renewal ceremony just, like, in the parking lot. and it, uh, Not in the parking lot, but in their driveway. And it's just like, shit. 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 What is gonna happen next? You know, things are going pretty crazy. Honestly, I'm not really here for the Gary Maggie drama right now. Um, like I said, I do like Gary and Maggie together, and I do like Maggie as an actor, uh, and I like Maggie's actress, but, like, I am way, way more invested in the Eddie, you know, situation with, you know, his current condition, and of course, another thing that I'm really invested in is for Roman Gina, you know, uh, I actually am completely on Gina's side with this one, you know, Gina and Rome got robbed of a baby that they thought was theirs you know they held that baby they thought it was going to be theirs they thought they were going to take him home and then all of a sudden it was just taken from them out of nowhere they were completely blindsided so rome he tries to just move on and like jump into it with a new kid because you know they got jumped up on the waiting list because of everything that happened but gina rightfully so is like no i'm not ready look we lost a son. We need to mourn this. We can't just replace it with another child. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to me. And most importantly, it's not going to be fair to that baby. And I entirely agree with Gina. I do think Rome and Gina need a period of time to just kind of get themselves together, grieve the loss of the baby, and when they feel like they're in the right place in their lives... They should try again because they are great parents and they will do great raising whatever kid is lucky enough to be adopted into this big ass chosen family. It's going to be great. I absolutely love this episode and man, just the moment with Catherine and Gary, like holding Eddie's hand, and Eddie squeezing back, you know, Theo realizing what's going on with Eddie, all of it was just an emotional roller coaster from beginning to end, and I absolutely loved it. This is why I love this show. It keeps you enthralled from start to finish, and boy, did it just fly by. But yeah, let me know all your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. Any theories about what's going to be going on this season, I would love to hear them in the comments. And I will see you guys in two weeks for the next episode of A Million Little Things Season 3, and I will be covering A Million Little Things Season 3 as the episodes drop week to week. So if you want more A Million Little Things content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also review a bunch of other great TV shows as well, so if you want more TV reviews and you liked my thoughts on A Million Little Things, definitely check out what else I have to offer here. In the outro card, I will leave linked a video YouTube mysterious algorithm things you might like, which I hope you do, and I'll also leave linked my most recent uploads you can get a feel for what I have to offer here on the channel in case you want to check out more of my content. But until next time guys, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you guys in the next review, which for a million little things will be in two weeks. I'll see you then. Peace.